Welcome to my new studio. Well, studio as in a sheet of MDF that I painted white and tacked on to the end of my desk. But this is what we're working with. No expense spared here. My project for this week is an Acer laptop. This is what it looks like. I bought this as a batch of about 20 laptops. And there's a cracked screen on it. And it supposedly has a motherboard fault. So let's flip it over and just get the motherboard. Whoops. Oh, I don't care if I crack the screen at this stage. So what are we got to spin it around? That's the model number. Acer Aspire 3 A31551 series. And we're going to take out the board and get a look at this on the screen. And this is our motherboard. So I've had a look around this and I can't see any signs of physical damage. So we're going to start where we always start, at the DC input jack. Now I had the cable to go into this so I've identified that our red wire goes into these two pins right here. And our black wire comes into these two pins here. And they go across to the other side of the board. So let's follow them through to the other side of the board. And following our positive and our negative through to the other side of the board, we can find them here. So what I'm going to do is just mark out the path that it takes. So if we start right from here, this is where a positive input comes in. This is obviously our ground. So where does it go? We're along this track here and onto this component, which I think is a diode. So let's mark that in. Once it goes through that component, we're coming through the other side and onto here which comes on to this MOSFET. I think this is an N-channel MOSFET. It ends in a four. So we're coming from here down to here. Let's mark that in. And after that MOSFET, we're coming straight onto our current sense resistor. And after our current sense resistor, this is our main power rail. So that's what our input section looks like. And what I'm gonna do here is the same as usual. I'm gonna check for any obvious shorts on the input and we'll see where we stand after that. So how do we check for shorts? Well, as usual, we introduce our multimeter in diode mode, place our red probe to ground, and let's start taking some measurements with our black probe. So the first place we wanna check, obviously, is at the input jack, and that's right here. So when I place my probe to the positive input pin, we measure 0 0.663. So there's no short at the input jack. Following along this track, we meet the first component in line, which is this diode. So obviously the same diode measurement from here is the same here. But coming through this diode, we want to measure on the other side to see if there's a short between this diode and the MOSFET. So I place my probe here in diode mode and we measure 0 0.636. So there's no short at the section between the diode and the MOSFET. So we've no short up to this MOSFET at least anyway. And the last check I want to make at this initial stage is just to see if there is or is not a short after this MOSFET. So I'm going to place my probe right here. And what we measure is 0 0.504. So there's no short on the input section and there's no short on the main power rail. So what I'm going to do now, I've no adapter with this, as is always the case if you follow along my channel. So I'm going to inject some power onto this motherboard and see what happens. So how do we bring power onto this motherboard? Well, first of all, I introduce my DC power supply. I connect my black wire to ground and my red wire to my positive DC input. And I set it to 19 volts DC. Now, when I did that, it immediately started drawing 0 0.245 amps, so almost a quarter of an amp. Now, this should be in standby. So we've seen in standby on particularly the most recent Dell laptops we've been working on, that it should be drawing about 10 milliamps. That would be 0 0.010. So that seems a little high for standby. So I think there is something wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check around the laptop and see if something is heating up. I touched around the board while injecting the 19 volts and observing that there was 0 0.245 of an amp being pulled and this is what I spotted. On the other side of the board there's this 
ALC255 I see and it's got really really hot and as you can see when I doused it in alcohol it burnt it off pretty quickly so it looked like this was the component that was carrying our current to ground and was possibly shorted now this is the IC that is heating up it could be the case that this IC itself is shorted or it could be the case that some component that it's connected to is shorted and the current is being pulled through this and then another component to ground maybe a capacitor or something like that so what I wanted to do was just check around and see if any of the components next to this IC were damaged or were coming up as short so in diode mode I checked around all the capacitors and what I found was that when I measured these two capacitors right here by placing my probe here I found that I got a measurement of 0 0.015 in diode mode and looking at the motherboard I found that this line or this track here comes around and also onto this IC as well so it looks like it may well be some voltage input let me just mark that line there so you can see the line that I'm talking about see along here so that's a common path that seems to feed into these two ICs and it's quite a big capacitor as well so it could well be an input line but we don't have to guess about that I can just pull up a data sheet so if when I pull up a data sheet for an ALC 250 which I presume is similar to the 255 I can see from the data sheet that pin 1 is marked as DVD D1 3.3 volts so this is a 3.3 volt digital input and just to be comprehensive if I check this IC right here we can get a data sheet for this as well and when I check that out I need to zoom in just a little bit pin 20 which is what is connected to this here is VCC and I've checked and this IC also takes 3.3 volts so it seems like the short or that 0.015 diode reading is right across that 3.3 volt rail I'm sure that some of you spotted in the previous section that it looked like there was bits of dirt between a couple of the pins over this side. So I got my toothbrush and a bit of alcohol and tried to clean it off. After trying to clean it off with the toothbrush, I said I'd look a bit closer in the microscope just to make sure there was no damage. But as you can see, it looked like there was still a bridge across two of the pins on that IC. So I thought it'd be better just to take the soldering iron and try and resolve that issue before going any further. So with the thinnest solder tip I could find, I set about trying to break that bridge. So as you can see, it's not the greatest soldering iron in the world by any means. I need to get some new tips but I was able to solder each one individually and break that bridge. After finishing up the bit of soldering work on the pins of that ALC255, I checked it under the microscope and all looked good. So the next step was to try inject voltage again and see if we got a different result. So I switched on my DC power supply, set it to 19 volts, and when I did that, unfortunately, it pulled 0.245 of an amp which is the same as what we were getting before I cleaned it up and when it pulled that 0.245 amp I touched around the board and the same IC the ALC255 was heating up again now even though I measured 0.015 in diode mode across that 3.3 volt input rail I can't ignore the fact that that's the only IC on the board that's heating up so I decided the best thing to do was to remove that IC And this is a video of me making a really bad job of removing this IC, but I got it off in the end. With the ALC255 now removed, I decided to power it on again. So when I powered it on again, this time it drew 0 0.045. Now it had been drawing 245 milliamps and is now drawing 45 milliamps. So it seemed like that IC was pulling 200 milliamps and that's why it was heating up. However, we've seen the other laptops when they're in standby should be pulling about 0 0.010 or 10 milliamps. 
so 0 0.045 or 45 milliamps seems to be a little high. For the purposes of using this image here again I've just drawn an X over the ALC255 to signify that it's now been removed. So with that removed we're still pulling too much current so I just wanted to confirm that the short that was on this power rail is now gone. So in diode mode I place my red probe to ground down here and I place my black probe to this capacitor here which had been measuring 0 0.015 but when I place my probe to it now with the IC removed I find that it measures 0 0.022 so I think that's still way too low so I think there may be other faults on this 3.3 volt rail. Now when I was looking around the board checking in diode mode I spotted this. As you can see this chip is clearly damaged. When I did my initial visual inspection there was bits of plastic on top of this so I thought it was just you know the remnants of the plastic that was sitting on this but when I scraped it away this IC is actually blown. So my heart sank a little bit with that because now we've at least two faults on the board and possibly more. But I took it off anyway and decided just to try and inject power again and see what had happened. With my two ICs now removed, I connected up the power supply again and when I powered it on, I found that it drew 0 0.045 of an amp or 45 milliamps which is the same as before I removed that second IC. So it seems like we still have more problems so I'm going to continue to take measurements from the 3.3 volt rail. I decided to check around the other components that I know will be on the 3.3 volt rail starting with the BIOS chip. So as we know with these BIOS ICs, these 8 pin ones Pin 1 is here and 2, 3, 4 is usually ground, 5, 6, 7, 8 is usually VCC in. So I know there should be 3.3 volts or with some 1.8 volts on it but usually with this generation of board there should be 3.3 volts on this. So I introduced my multimeter in diode mode. I placed my red probe to ground. I just wanted to take a diode mo mode reading at that pin 8. And when I took a diode mode reading at pin 8 which is right here. I found that there was a measurement of 0 0.002. So the 3.3 volts going to the bias pin is shorted. While I was carrying out these checks, I also checked all of these inductors as well. And what I found was that if I measured here at this inductor, so I took a measurement right here. And when I measured there in diode mode, I also measured 0 0.002. Now it doesn't tell me exactly on the schematic what this uh, inductor or this IC is for but the fact that it's coming in so short I'm going to inject voltage right in here and see what heats up. So this is my power supply connected up to that inductor. As you can see I'm injecting 2 volts, it's drawing 3.2 amps and unfortunately the part of the motherboard that is heating up is this right here so when I put my finger on that that is heating up and nothing else on the board so it looks like our chipset is blown so unfortunately that's it guys another very frustrating video this week but hopefully it's all just part of the learning process that's all I got for this week guys hopefully you've learned something from this it's been very frustrating um, Unfortunately, I think I may have got my hands on a batch of hopeless cases. Um, I was told when buying these laptops that they had not been looked at by somebody else. But I don't think it's just coincidence that all of these laptops have serious faults. Whereas I fixed over 50% of the laptops that I've got from another source. Um, I think it may well be the case that somebody is looking over these, quickly identifying that they are hopeless cases and passing them on to me. Um, this is obviously not good because it means it reduces the number of repairs we get. But look, I'm going to persist with them. I don't have anything else to work on at the moment that I can use for content for the channel. So um, it's all I got, unfortunately. But please like and subscribe and I'll be back with possibly another hopeless case next week.